it's a very common question ask asked in the exam so how do you uh, evaluate the metastasis from unknown primary or it's a simple question uh, metastasis from unknown primary so what does it mean it means that uh, there is a lesion and you don't know the source of primary so how you investigate and how you approach and then how do you manage it so let's see uh, see it one by one so first it is very important to get your clinical evaluation with history and clinical examination to complete your workup so how does the patient with a metastatic um, with a metastatic bone disease presents so pain is the most common symptom then if it is for a long time because when the cortex is weakened then there may be pathological fracture like we said the most common site of the metastasis is the vertebral bodies in the spine and so it may presents with back pain or with a pathological fracture with cord compression and neuro deficits and in some cases with uh, hypercalcemia so so all these factors affect the mobility and the functional uh, quality of life so let us see by examples like how do we ask for the history and what examinations we need to do so very important to take the relevant clinical history so coming to the thyroid you have to ask for uh, any previous history so the patient may tell that uh, uh, and many a times in indian females this may be hidden if they are uh, if they are wearing any clothes or scarf so uh, don't forget to examine the whole body and uh, in fact it's uh, uh, when evaluating a uh, suspected uh, pathological uh, in a metastatic bone disease you should uh, evaluate systemic examination very properly and don't miss out i have written uh, once you go through books you will find that there are multiple examinations but this is these are the critical elements of this uh, history and examination which you should not miss because this will guide you towards arriving at the right diagnosis and if you miss these examinations in your exam uh, or if you don't mention it 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 will give you a negative marking for missing out these important points so like thyroid you have to ask for any previous history of uh, thyroid surgery in the past or if there is any swelling in the neck which is increasing over the time so and then you have to examine the thyroid also so you have i've written like in the blue what you see is the uh, history and in the red and in the red what is here is it is about how you what you examine the next comes your lung so ask for the history of chronic cough for hemoptysis which is the most common presenting features and once you for examination you have to auscultate the lung if there is any way less air entry or uh, you may find on uh, any consolidation on uh, uh, percussion very important to examine ask for the history of lump in the breast ask whether the patient does any self breast examination and if not then on examination you have to examine all the four quadrants of the breast to look for any lump or swelling for kidneys you have to ask for the history of hematuria and for uh, examination you have to do the balotment test which is done in the lateral position for prostate similarly you can ask for frequent micturition uh, any previous history of any prostatic surgery done and don't forget to do the pr examination or even if you have not done but uh, in the examination you should say that uh, uh i could not do pr pr examination if you are not done but document that you would have uh, wanted to do the pr examination to look for the prostatic size and if there is any increase in size or size of the prostate the constitutional symptoms are usually uh present in the uh, metastatic bone diseases unlike primary bone sarcomas in primary bone tumors the constitutional symptoms like uh, fever weight loss are usually not present in the beginning but if it is there uh shows a late presentation it's an advanced disease if it is there in these uh, suspected bone metastasis so it is commonly there because the, usually the primary sites may release different uh, cytokines which causes this constitutional symptoms early so you must ask a uh, history about these symptoms also so depending upon your clinical evaluation and examination 
uh, your further investigation modality depends. So what do we examine? In the lab investigations, like commonly you ask for your routine examination, CBC, LFT, KFT, uh, how do they help you? So just with this simple examination of total protein, it may be increased in uh, multiple myeloma where there is hyperproteinemia. Uh, there may be albumin and globulin ratio. The normal is around 1.2. So it may be reversed in multiple myeloma where there is hypergamma globulinemia. Then you have uh, serum PTH. If there are multiple bone lesions, you have to rule out that it is not probably due to hyperparathyroidism. Then you have alkaline phosphatase, which will help you towards identifying uh, the different lesions. So like it can help you differentiate between giant cell tumor or hyperparathyroidism or in a metastatic bone disease. Once it is very, very high in 10 and thousands, so probably it indicates a very high bone turnover seen in multiple bone metastasis. Specific about multiple myeloma, once suppose if you have done these routine investigations, you see there is hyperparaproteinemia and reverse AG ratio, then probably you can directly ask for serum protein, electrophoresis, serum free light chains and Benz Jones protein, which, which will uh, guide you towards the diagnosis of multiple myeloma. Then there are certain tumor markers like uh, carcino embryonic antigen and uh, 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 cancer antigen 19.9, 15.3, then you have alpha fetoproteins. Uh, so there are different organs from where these are released. These are released, and this is just uh, you can say that CA is usually in the GI system like colorectal or but it, it is these are not very specific. This helps you in arriving at the diagnosis and has to be collaborated with your clinical examination. Where uh, did you find anything? abnormal on breast examination then accordingly you guide your further investigations to that like you have a prostate specific antigen so it may be elevated in case of uh, thyroid malignancy so so these are this is the broad overview and this is just the pictorial representation of different tumor markers and sometimes it may be asked in the exam so you must be aware of at least uh, five or six different tumor markers specifically CEA, CA19.9, CA15.3, alpha fetoprotein, PSA. So these are the common markers. Radiological investigations, how should we evaluate? So before the era of uh, CT scans, we had chest x-ray and we used to do a skeletal survey which includes uh, extra lateral view of the skull. You have uh, chest x-ray, you have pelvis, you have the spine and uh, both the humerus and the femur so this would tell you about the involvement of any bone but now we have this CT scans available and so current uh, guidelines say like you can use CT thorax and abdomen with the pelvis and along with the bone scan so this will complete your staging workup and helps you identify the primary site in more than uh, 85 to 90 percent of the cases and now we have the still availability of uh, PET scan, uh, which is positron emission topography. And this has combined not just the structural evaluation, but the physiological uh, evaluation, the biological behavior of the disease process in your body. And with this PET scan, now it is emerging as the single modality of evaluation where you can uh, scan your entire body. Usually, if you are suspecting a lesion in the brain, uh, you might have to do an additional uh, MRI uh, of the brain to look for that. And if you are suspecting something uh, distal in the appendicular system, please mention it properly in your find in your uh, PET scan. Also, like suppose if uh, if you are evaluating a, a melanoma uh, in the lower leg in the foot. So you have to mention it clearly in the history that there, there is a lesion there and you are where you are expecting things. If, if the patient has neurological symptoms, uh, disorientation, then you are suspecting something in the brain. Then you have to mention it properly so that they can scan it entirely from the skull vertex down to the toe. So this is all the radiological evaluation. And uh, this is, like I said, the concept of three pillars, which is commonly... Uh, uh, you have to uh, 
collaborate all of these three to come to the right diagnosis, especially pertaining to primary bone neoplasm. Based on the clinical evaluation, your radiological findings, you confirm with your histology. So the sequence will be one, two, and three. And these three things should fit together in arriving at the right diagnosis. Even after all this complete evaluation, say you have done the, there is a lesion say in the uh, 70 year old uh, patient and uh, there are multiple lesions in the bone and you, have, uh, you don't see after evaluation any other site of the primary and you biopsy. So, and it shows some site of uh, some sort of carcinoma or adenocarcinoma. So this is also a possibility. And usually we see that in around uh, three to 10% of the cases, that means in around 90 to 95% you will be able to get the source of the primary whether it is arising from say kidney, thyroid, prostate, wherever. But so somewhere between 3 to 10% you may not be able to find uh, where it is arising from. Though the biopsy will show you some, uh, some carcinoma which is not a primary bone neoplasm, probably it is coming from some another areas. So that is called metastasis from unknown primary. So let's come to the next part, which is about the general principles of management <coughs> in metastatic bone disease. So what are these principles? So very important. The first principle is the purpose of the treatment is to improve the quality of life. <coughs> 